You've been listening to The New Trust Economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at New Trust Economy. Thanks for exploring the New Trust Economy with us. Hi, and welcome to the New Trust Economy. I'm Monica Profit, and I'm here with my very special guest, Michael Gassiorek, the head of marketing at Trust Token and CEO of Truth Cartel. Welcome, Michael. Thank you so much for making So good to be here. Thanks so much for having me. It's going to be a fun time. It is going to be a fun time. I was taking some notes about like you know, the things I can ask you and all the stories that you've got. And you're like, you can ask me anything. And I'm like, are you sure Ask me that? anything. Ask, ask me anything. Let's get like, on the record. Yeah. See, some people are confessors and some people mm-hmm. are not confessors. You know, when you find <laughs> another confessor, it's like you just can keep going. So I'll try it's not to make this time. too crazy long. But, you know, we, we, we kind of looked at the metrics and been like, oh, OK, people like, down, like to, to see podcasts that kind of meet with their commute. But we've also yes. like, that's about 25 minutes, right? But we've also seen mm-hmm. like this massive wave of people working from home, not commuting anymore or not working at all. So it doesn't, I'm not sure if like 25 minutes is any target anymore. Like is that data just old? Sure. Is that from like the pre-COVID times? I don't know. But yeah, I mean, hey, you got those top podcasts that go for two and a half hours too. So right? uh, you can that's make true. examples one or the other, right? That's true. That's true. Well, I've, um, mm-hmm. from the stories that you've already told me, I have a feeling this is not going to be boring. <laughs> You were like, we can go through my immigrant story. We can go to my burning man story. I have like a full integration mm-hmm. of my personality. And I'm thinking to myself, really? Okay, this is this is where we begin. But actually, I think <laughs> to start off kind of in a boring way, I do want to sort of, since I did say trust token from the beginning, can you just mm-hmm. give me like the blurb of what trust token is? And also, how do you juggle this thing where you also do truth cartel at the same time? Yeah, you bet, you bet. Uh, well, let's do one at a time, shall we? Yeah. Uh, so I'll explain what, what uh, Trust Token is, what Truth Cartel is, and how those two integrate. But the sort of TLDR and what uh, Trust Token is, too long to read, is uh, we're a company that makes assets and rails for a new financial economy, right? We've, we're known for making stable coins or basically dollar-backed assets. Uh, stable coins are basically dollars that move faster, more quickly, and without a trusted third party. So no banks. You, can, you and I could make a deal right here. And before you know, the sentence is finished, probably clear that transaction for pennies on the dollar. Um, we were the first ever stable coin after Tether um, and are now moving a few billion dollars around the world per month. And we're also one of the first companies to do stable coins in other currencies, so Hong Kong dollars, British pounds, what have you. Uh, about the last year, we were looking at those coins and thinking, huh, we got to give those coins more utility. We got to figure out better ways to do some, you know, to make those coins useful for people. What is it? What does the crypto market need? And one of the things that we saw was there was a really good opportunity to bring something that we're very good at compliance, regulation, legal, all that to the stuff that uh, the market was already kind of hyping about, uh, which was decentralization, new financial products, um, you know, on-chain lending. We found an opportunity that was basically the best of Centralized and decentralized finance, something called CD5 a lot of the time. Uh, and we were the first protocol to launch a um, on-chain unsecured lending platform. Unsecured meaning these loans are not backed by dollars. So this is not like a loan for your car or a loan for your house backed by collateral, but much more like a student loan or a credit card loan, uh, except the credit card loans that we make are in the millions or tens of millions of dollars. And we make it from business to business. So uh, we basically crowdsource a bunch of money uh, from retail users like you and me, uh, people putting in a thousand bucks, 10,000 bucks, what have you, lump that together into a pool and lend that pool out to big crypto funds. But in the future, we plan to be lending that kind of money out to um, everyone from, you know, uh, people in debt financing to real estate brokers. We'll see kind of where, we, where the market wants to go. Uh, so that's my day to day. I lead all marketing there. Um, and coincidentally, uh, I still, you know, have my, have my nine to five there, but also my five to nine as the CEO of Truth Cartel, uh, which is a marketing agency specifically oriented around crypto. How do we run those two things together? Well, one of the things I did was uh, when I was getting hired, I stipulated, hey, listen, I love this company. I really want to work here, but you got to let me run this agency too. Uh, and my pitch was, at the end of the day, you think about the agency as just another source of talent and resources for my marketing efforts. Uh, and that went over really well. And so I continue to run that day by day, uh, mostly consulting for pretty uh, sizable and also a few up and coming crypto projects around content, social media, uh, influencer marketing and uh, PR. Um, and I couldn't do it without a bunch of partners. So I have a great suite of account managers. I have a great uh, team of uh, contractors who do a lot of, a lot of delivery. Um, and a lot of times, um, you know, 
trust token loves some of the talent that we bring to bear too. So um, I got my nine to five, my five to nine, and a great team on both sides to keep me uh, keep me both uh, honest and productive. That is a lot. I mean, I I personally <laughs> love to have more than one job all the time, but uh, damn, you've got when you're completely CEO as well as basically CMO. I mean, that's just uh, two C suites at the same time. That's kind of a Steve Jobs move right there. I hope. I hope it works out well. Just stay hydrated, you know. Stay well, hydrated. for sure, for sure. You got uh, well, you got the Elon Musk of the world and the Jack Dorsey of the world running two public companies, or at least close to public companies. I'm just over here, you know, moving my moving my little you know, bits and bobs and ideas across the board. Uh, but again, they they do it with teams of thousands. I do it with a team of maybe you know four to five on one side, and maybe twenty or thirty on the other. Um, and that seems to do the job, you know. Wow, so so I'm incredible. really privileged to have the have the flexibility, but also just smart people who own stuff, you know. I don't have to worry so much about uh, micromanaging. If I did, I'd go crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, there's, I think that one of the rings of hell is micromanagement in general. You know, on both sides. <laughs> For both so parties. You're getting well, exactly. it, you're doing it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, I, can't, I know this is a little like off topic from the from the DeFi part. I, I'm really in, in the DeFi by the end of this, but you, know, you said your immigrant story and, and just uh, I noticed this about myself when I moved to New York several years ago that I, you know, just made all new friends because I moved to a new city. I was in my late thirties, late thirties. Ooh, thunder. Did you hear that? We're getting a storm mm. here. Um, I'm in New York as well, actually. So I haven't, oh, it haven't nice. hit me yet, at least right now. Anyway, I noticed that most of my friends uh, were immigrants. I mean, granted, New York is a city mm -hmm. of immigrants, but I realized I was gravitating towards certain types of people and because it aligned with kind of who I am. And I am not an immigrant. My parents were not immigrants. My family's been here a long time, but I noticed that my work ethic and work style mm. and my friends and these like hyper hustler, like first, second generation, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. folks, we were really similar and it was a new thing to discover. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that, does that resonate for you? Is that, do you think that that's part of it? I mean, it could just be correlated, but I can't, kind of can't help but think like, man, the, the hustling mm -hmm. attitude of, of immigrant, regardless of where they're from, is just like pretty obvious. For sure. This whole concept of like making it, I think like echoes in the minds of a lot of immigrants, but also say it echoes in the minds of a lot of New Yorkers. Right, yeah. the, the it is something about the city, but also about the lifestyle of immigrants. Uh, we got here, you know, we came from a pretty upper middle class family in Poland. We had a good life there, uh, but you know, my family was still kind of, you know, kind of young. I was I was born pretty uh, to a pretty young family, so kind of still pre-established. And then we started over. We started from scratch in uh, in New Jersey and New York. Uh, we were below the poverty line, maybe thirty five to less thousand bucks for a family of three. Uh, in you know in New Jersey in kind of a dingy neighborhood, um, and when you're when you're coming up from there, you, you kind of you know you want to make it. And for a long part of my life, how old were you? Three years. By the way? Uh, I was six. Oh, okay. Six or seven. Okay. So you could say I like I've lived most of my life in America, but I would never say I'm like quite American. Like I'm some I'm something like on the on the on the knife's edge there. Yeah. Um. Uh. But the the reality of it is. Like, you know, you, you start there and, you know, I didn't have a lot of friends. We didn't have a lot of money for even healthy food. So I gained a fair amount of weight. Like it was not an easy time period, right? Yeah. Didn't know the language. Um, and so you grow up like that and you just kind of want to make it. You don't want to go back there. And so I think for a long time until maybe about age 23, uh, there was a big sort of like big success and big humbling moment immediately thereafter. You kind of just, uh, you're driven by the, like, almost like this, like relentlessness, maybe even some fear of you never want to go back there again. Yeah. Um, and it took me past age 23, I think after, so after age 23, 24 is when I started to figure out like, wait a minute, like I don't have to be motivated by the fear of not making anymore. I can be motivated by the love of the game. And I think that's kind of what opened up my mind to taking on slightly like more fun, more risky projects, eventually getting into crypto, emphasizing like my quality of life and my community beyond just my, you know, hustle and bustle. Um, and I think being in a city like New York, for example, which, you know, we are both in now, you can have the best of both worlds. You can have that amazing community and you can be surrounded by real hustlers. You can, you can be in the depths of like tech, crypto, con, you know, content and, and media and yeah. still, you know, have a really beautiful time with these folks on the weekends. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, why not both? Uh, oh, but man. I recognize it, where you're coming from. You are actually, you're reminding me of, I have to, I have to put, make this clear. I don't want to lead you astray. I, <laughs> I lived in New York for seven years. And earlier this year, um, you know, crypto was exploded, lots of reasons to do this. I came down, I was like, I got to get to a beach after sitting like a good little girl in my COVID bubble for you know, 13 months. I came down to Puerto Rico uh, and Puerto Rico. realized, yep. 
Oh my God, everybody from every conference I've been after the last the previous two Seriously. three years is here totally. once. It's a conference that never ends. Oh my God, I've got to come down. So I actually now spend half the year in Puerto Rico and I'm here in San Juan now. Um, oh, there you go. Soon. Yeah, and we're getting a big storm. So if we lose internet, we're going to have to maybe do some of this over again. We might just splice it. Oh, that's okay. I'll, sl I'll slide down to Puerto Rico too. That's the time. I might be there in a little bit. But like, what's your, what's your deep enough for the crypto scene? You like do like a circuit. It's really funny. It's like, besides the conference circuit, it's like New York, Miami, sometimes San Francisco, sometimes LA, you know, some people end up going to Puerto Rico and on a pretty rotating basis. And then there's a few spots in Europe, like Lisbon yep. being a new hub now, Paris for ETCC. Like it's, oh my God, I know, I know like what you're talking about. Yep. Of yep. course. And then, you know, Hong Kong for a lot of the crypto stuff there. Too, and it'll right? it's like Dash of Singapore in there. Yeah. And you're done. Exactly. Maybe a little bit Vegas uh, for the more like uh, folks who are coming to crypto from being professional poker players. Well, yeah, actually, I think uh, Coin Agenda just wrapped up in Vegas. My friend Adrian mm -hmm. Ashley was just speaking there. She's like, you want to come speak? And I was like, no, I'm done. I'm at the conference. that never done, ends. Done. I, I, I live in the conference now. Like there is, I have yeah. conference rules. My, one of my conference rules is never leave the house without your bikini and your purse because you never know when you're going to end up in a hot tub because it's a conference, right? Facts. Now Facts. conference rules are like, I always have a bikini in my purse because conference rules mm -hmm. exist all the time now. So mm -hmm. and whenever I've been caught without it, it's exactly when everyone's like, oh, let's get in the hot tub. And I'm like, ah, why did I do that? I have conference rules for a reason. Anyway, yep. yes. There you go, ladies rules, and gentlemen, this is what it's like to be full-time in crypto. Yeah, it's true. But I mean, I'll be coming back to New York pretty soon. So when I come back, we've definitely got to hang out. Let's do that. But uh, I think uh, I know what's to be here for winter. So I'm scoping on Mexico City as the next stop Ooh, for winter. Mexico City is no bad place. That's for sure. I was actually mm -hmm. at the before in the before times before COVID. I was um, invited down to attend the Stellar um, Medellin or whatever, mm -hmm. or Meridian. Medellin. The Stellar, yeah, yeah Stellar yeah. Meridian Conference down in Mexico City. Okay. Amazing. Beautiful venue. And this like, old open air tons of plants just like how do you have such a beautiful conference oh it's mexico city that's how because i think uh -huh. beautiful, beautiful <laughs> yeah but i digress i digress what are we <laughs> ah aha right back to the point back to the point you're too easy to talk to um so <laughs> we have a topic here of like coming soon you've got stuff coming up with uh true fi has got all do? kinds of cool stuff happening and we have to announce it so please help me move this along let's do that let's do that so this is gonna be kind of cool because we haven't talked too much about this stuff publicly yet right some of these pieces a little bit but the things i'm gonna that what i will end on at least consider it's coming soon it'll be kind of brand new yeah and uh I'll, I'll share it not just as a uh, announcement but as an invitation we're figuring this stuff out and we're actually looking for partners on that side so uh what true by does today is we do unsecured lending and you know we do move uh you know close to 550 to 150 million dollars a month to different to different lenders and borrowers um, and you've already heard me say that on the, on the, on the lender side, you, you know, put money in whatever amount of money you want and mostly into stable coins because so people want to borrow and you're getting a really nice rate of return, 10 to 30%, pretty safe, um, in terms of the, the layers of assurance on top of it. So very transparent, pretty high yield, uh, and, and very well assured on the demand side, we got these borrowers, they're coming in, they're trying to borrow 10, 20, 30, 50, maybe even a hundred million bucks. The best of the best, the cream of the crop across crypto. Yeah. Your, uh, you know, folks like your Alameda, your Celsius, um, Wintermute, Nibio, um, I can go on and on. But these are the best of the best in terms of funds, trading firms, et cetera, right? Uh, they pay these pretty high rates of return because they're not putting up any collateral so they can maximize their efficiency. So instead of putting up ETH to get DAI, they're putting up nothing, just their credit score and reputation to get the same amount of money and then they can use that ether diet to trade elsewhere. So everyone seems to be happy with it. And we have the true holders who actually approve new borrowers, who govern the platform, what have you. That's the protocol today, right? Uh, there are two cool things that are gonna be happening. Wait, hang three, on, can I, I just stop you for a second? Yeah, so, sure. As it, as, it is, as it exists today. So yes, I'm a user, I have 500 bucks. Let's say for easy numbers, mm -hmm. I have a thousand bucks and I'm That's gonna true. go onto TruFi and set up an, an account. And I have to mm -hmm. give you guys, of course, my KYC stuff, but then I give you like my credit score and I put my money in and you basically say, okay, cool. Oh, I guess the credit score is sort of, you can, you can borrow, but if I was want to just like lend out my money, I could be like, I'll lock mm -hmm. this up and you guys are yep. going to give me 10 to 30% on my, so after the year is up, I locked up for a year, I would get between like a hundred and three hundred dollars off my thousand bucks. Well, let's say, let's, let's dig into that a little bit more, right? Yeah. So uh, in principle, you'd actually get uh, probably upwards of, let's see, so you put in a thousand, you're probably going to get over 300 bucks for the end of that year uh, on the basis of interest, which is coming in around eight to 12% on the basis of incentives paid out in TRU, 
right? So in aggregate, you're probably going to get 30 to 40 percent returns on your thousand bucks, right? Now, you know, that you have to, as a smart investor, you will have considered your gas costs going in and out. So you want to make sure that those gas costs don't eat your profit. But with a thousand bucks, you'd be looking at probably about 300 to $400 in return for the year. Uh, but uh, there's two other your cool gas costs. And it's all in ETH? Is that why exactly. gas costs are a problem or are a part of the always yes. thing? Yes, currently, currently both on ETH. Uh, but we are looking at other layer two solutions, including scaling solutions. So we're not ready to announce anything about that yet, but you can rest assured that uh, probably close to January onwards, we'll be looking at, uh, you know, announcing something in that regard. So we'll see. But there are two other big things I want to share with you as a lender that are very interesting to lenders listening. And anyone can lend. That's the great part about it. Anyone at all in the world can lend. Wow. The first part is there is no KYC and there's no account. If you have a MetaMask, if you have a self-custodied wallet, this is not your Celsius or Nexo or, or Crypto.com. This is not your Gemini or Coinbase. This, you, you click connect your wallet and then you lend, period. So there's, wow. there's no KYC, there's no permissioning, there's no hoops to jump through. With a few clicks uh, and a few approved transactions, you're lending and you're earning returns. Wow. Right? So that's the first thing of all. I have the a question about you know, that. Hang on before yeah, you go there. So... Yep. Um, is, are these incentives and this return, is this really kind of based on the kind of bull market that we're in right now? Or is this something that someone can lock up and even in a bear market, those returns are going to be pretty predictably consistent? So let's, let's break it down into two parts, right? So those returns, let's say, let's, let's call it 30%, I think, right? Um, there's a portion paid out in your base currency. So let's say I'm, earning, I'm, I'm lending out in a stable coin. I'll be earning it back in that same stable coin for 7 to 12%. The way to think about that is just like your bank pays you interest on your savings account. Now they'll pay you 0.03 or something, right? They're going to pay you jack on that, on that right. uh, savings, but it will be in the base currency. So you're getting paid out in dollars and it will be stable, right? But it also depends on what the market rate is. So the market rate is set by the Fed, it's set by you know, how much money they can get on that, on that yeah. money. Um, and so just the same way, that base rate is set by borrowers. And borrowers are typically borrowing for as cheap as 7%. And for as expensive as maybe 18%. So that base rate is going to fluctuate, and let's call it an average rate of 10 to 12%. So your base rate, I wouldn't say guaranteed, but in a, in based on statistical averages, you're probably getting that 10% stably. So let's talk about the other side of that. What about that 20%, right? Yeah. Well, that 20% comes in these token incentives, right? We're very, very generous with our token incentives. Um, and those token incentives are coming in the order of 20, 30, 40, 50% of your investment and based on two things. Firstly, what is the people, what are the people running the protocol? That is to say our users think we should be rewarding people who are lending to us so they can set the rate. And uh, I can't promise you that they will go up or down because it's up to all of us, people who use the protocol to do it. Right now, the protocol uh, incentives are very generous. Now, what about actually harvesting those returns? So let's say you've got in uh, on, you know, after about a year's, uh, year's worth of uh, working with us, you've gotten that $200 of that 300 in these tokens, right? Now the token price can go up, token price can go down, right? right? So uh, those rates are, you know, our token has been pretty stable uh, over the last, uh, let's say, uh, month or so, although it's gone up recently in price, which is, you know, good for everybody using us. Right. And that's above on top of the it's estimated 30 if the tokens that you're holding exactly. goes up. That's not really a exactly okay. exactly. So you you let's say you get two hundred dollars in our token. Uh, if we crash by fifty percent, then it's unfortunately going to only be worth hundred dollars the okay. day that you harvest it, unless you want to hold on to it, right? Uh, then it might go back up. Uh, but if the token price increases, which it has been doing in the last month or so, alongside the sort of Bitcoin ETF and the market kind of getting a little uh, frothy, uh, then you're actually up over two hundred percent. So um, those token incentives are subject to the market conditions. But those, those, those base layer interest return is subject to demand. Right. right? Okay. And so it's an interesting blend, right? It's a it two is an part interesting blend. Yeah. Question. I love yeah. that. Thank you so much. No, for sure. Let me give one last point about lending, which is that when you describe putting your money in, you actually don't lock it up. You can exit your position at any time very cheaply. Um, so that if you get bored of us, you find a better opportunity elsewhere. Um, you feel like you need that money to pay your, you know, new down payment on the house because things are going well for you. Uh, you can take that money out today without any penalties, without any fees, at any costs besides the gas exit. So there's no lockup, which is really nice too. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, as a lender. 
Thank you for answering yeah. that question. I'm sorry to have uh, yeah. to jumped in, but I was like, wait a minute. Hardly, hardly. I want a user to kind of see what would happen if they just go right to mm -hmm. truefi.io. Is that correct? Yep, truefi.io. That's us. And you -E -F -I -I -O. Yeah. And we're going to have all of these links in the show notes. So uh, you'll be able to just click right on the, all of the links. They mm -hmm. will all be there. Mm -hmm. And um, anything that we mentioned will, of course, be researched and put in there too. Sweet. So we don't have to. Awesome. Thank God. That's all that part. <laughs> I'm going to spell everything out, right? Shout out um, to the post producers. I, I love it. Yes. Right. Thank goodness. Uh, so that's kind of how it works for the lenders. Now, borrowers do go through a much more rigorous process. That's Those guys do KYC. Those guys do have to get approved by the community. Those guys do have to submit loans to get approval on a case-by-case -case basis right now. Um, and that ends up leading to the best possible borrowers, the best possible safety of those borrowers, because you know ultimately we're not just bringing anyone on board. Um, and also leads to uh, really good rates, because people are not going to approve rates that are below market demand, market standard. So, you know, the borrower side is very, very rigorous. Uh, and the lender side is open to all, both exiting and entering at any time. And there's going to be more and more types of lending and lines of credit available that are coming out. Yeah, let's talk about that. So, so I, I, I told you kind of how it works today. Um, you basically, you're crowdfunding loans, right? Uh, those loans are unsecured, so they're not backed by anything. So that gets you better returns, but exposes you a tiny bit more risk than, say, secured loans. That's why we have all these assurance layers on top. Um, and uh, so far, 100% repayment. $600 million cleared in less than a year. Wow. Um, a billion dollars. That's Thank huge. Thank you so much. It's a lot. You know, I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't even, I didn't even realize how fast DeFi could move. We, we ended up locking up over a billion dollars in the protocol in about eight months, nine months. And, uh, you know, think about what that takes in traditional finance, right? Raising a fund, a billion dollar fund. Are you kidding me? Uh, we got there in about six to eight months. So wow. we're, we're super privileged and we're trying to put that money to work. So. Always very eager to get more borrowers too. Now, all that said, I think the thing to, to really think about, like what comes next, right? We're already kind of in this weird space of being centralized and decentralized, you know, leading on compliance and legal and, and doing some interesting stuff there, uh, but also trying to, you know, create cool financial products for DeFi users. The big opportunity earlier was to put credit on the blockchain and that opens up the next great sort of product in, in, in DeFi, in my opinion, right? I think the big trend in DeFi generally is bringing more of these sophisticated financial products from traditional finance on chain. So we talked about you know, credit, credit ratings. Now yeah. we're talking about unsecured lending. But I think in the future, we're going to be looking at, you know, beyond our protocol, generally speaking, structured financial products like folks at Ribbon, um, you know, bonds like over folks at uh, Olympus, Dow. Um, there's a bunch of really cool things sort of happening in this space. And the products are getting more and more sophisticated and more and more eating up the TradFi markets. Okay, so Probably I have to most... ask you about these like sophisticated products because uh, real estate, real estate is like my passion, right? Mm -hmm. So um, tokenizing mm -hmm. real estate, looking at how, you know, DeFi, not DeFi specifically, but like tokens in general, crypto in general can be impacting uh, real mm -hmm. estate in a very, very basic way. Yeah. And on top of that, so many layers. So if mm -hmm. you are talking about opening up potential new products that could be take the place of say a mortgage, what does that look mm -hmm. like? And what are you guys, you know, thinking through? What are some of the questions, the answers? And I mean, maybe you don't have the product completely outlined, but mm -hmm. what are some of the issues that kind of come into play when you do have something that could be secured like a piece of real estate with mm -hmm. a crypto lending platform? Sure, so I've, I've been kind of like sitting with the whole uh, idea of crypto real estate for a little bit. Um, I know some really cool uh, sort of real estate uh, brokers and managers here in, in Brooklyn. Um, you know, uh, Toby Moskovitz of the Williamsburg Hotel actually wanted to tokenize their hotel, take crypto. And so I've been talking to real, like, you know, top people in, in real estate about yeah. this for a little while. We spoke about uh, real estate and crypto at this uh, at sort of major real estate club the other week. Um, and, you know, four of us on a panel thinking about how is this really going to work? There was a bunch of different issues that um, we still think exist in the, in sort of bringing real estate to crypto. Um, and so just as a handful of, of, of sort of, points in the right direction. One of the first things is that the legal um, overhead of um, bringing a piece of real estate on chain um, is extremely difficult and expensive. There's only so many lawyers who actually have the faculties to, to tokenize an asset. Forget the tech side of this, it's just a legal side of this. Um, it, it can cost close to $400,000 depending on the property, right? When you think about what the profit margin on, on real estate is, that eats up a lot of the return just yeah. to get that uh, on, the, on, the, on the blockchain, uh, which at the realistically hits on the second problem, which is where's the demand, right? Are crypto people really putting a lot of money in real estate? Uh, crypto people are literally putting more money in crypto. Real estate people are putting more money in real estate. 
these, these sectors, unfortunately, don't cross over very much. And unfortunately, you look at companies like Harbor, which is, you know, I kept my eye on for a little while, who is trying to tokenize real estate. Uh, and, you know, they had a reasonable exit, but ultimately, I think they were a little too early. Yeah. Oh, being early looks and a lot so, like being wrong. I can say that for, with exactly, from experience. Exactly. <laughs> being early looks like being wrong for the time being. But and I think, hey, you know, we were too early on tokenizing all the things that was token, which is why we ended up tokenizing more so debt type products than tokenizing real estate, cars, et cetera. Um, but that was the original thesis. Uh, the other two kind of like other concerns that I have is um, when you move from token, like tokenizing bits, right? You can tokenize, uh, you know, virtual real estate, virtual art, uh, tokenize, um, you know, a financial product. That's pretty easy to manage because it all exists in the same universe, shall we say. When you're trying to tokenize real world assets, the, it um, creates some additional layers of complexity. For us in doing unsecured lending, it means we have to think about collections, right? We have to go from the world of bits, which is very comfortable to navigate because we kind of know that world well, to the world of atoms, namely, you know, a company sitting in a particular office staffed by people who now owe us money, right? You have to go through traditional legal rails, financial rails to go after that money. And that is a non-trivial problem. Uh, and now when you, when you make that problem around a piece of real estate, um, it, the, the levels of complexity are, um, are, are exponential. Yep. So that's probably the biggest uh, one, in my opinion, personally. The move from atoms to bits uh, is still not one that blockchain has solved very well. Uh, and you have to think about collections, jurisdiction, uh, contract law, um, who's, gonna, who's actually going to manage you know, collections and management. Um, you know, what happens, for example, if the, if the uh, ownership claim on a house is on the blockchain and someone loses the wallet, is that house effectively derelict? Like, there are these, these, these unprecedented questions that I think um, crypto plus real estate have not yet grokked. Um, which is why I'm probably more bullish. And if, and if we, you know, as TrueFi or as, as a partner to TrueFi decide to go down this route, we're probably most interested from a real estate perspective, not in funding mortgages per se, not in funding, uh, you know, commercial or, or uh, res residential real estate, but probably in funding uh, the closest thing to financial assets representing claim to real estate. So that might be your uh, REITs or that might be another, another financial asset representing layer. real estate. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So that we don't have to go the do like the hardest thing about say logistics is the last mile. Yep. Getting something from like from you know warehouse to port and then port to you know the next port and then port to delivery. The hardest part is actually that you know like landing port down to the user's house. Yep. Um, that's super hard. And so if we can avoid doing that last mile where we have to go and manage and own the atoms to bits relationship, yep. then uh, you know we want to do everything we can to avoid that. That makes a lot of sense. I can I can see how it's going to be yeah. a pretty complicated uh, beast to sort of take apart. And and starting with a read is a very smart thing to do, especially if you want to keep mm -hmm. this all in the same general realm of bits and you know bytes totally. like that. Yeah. Totally. But it'll be very valuable of salt, right? There's this kind of like estimate where when you add extra liquidity to a an ecosystem, it ups the value of that asset by like up towards of twenty percent. Now, uh, real estate is kind of like a slow moving asset. At the end of the day you're not necessarily saying selling a building uh, multiple times per day, right? But in crypto, these transactions happen regularly, right? You could sell a piece of art multiple times per day. Uh, you're not necessarily moving your Picasso multiple times a day in the traditional art world, right? Yep. Um, if you can tokenize an asset, if you can you know, create a really cool ecosystem for the trade of real estate that uh, allows you know, more entrance, that allows um, you know, a little bit of their liquidity, you can increase the net value of the asset. Now, there's many steps and abstractions to get there, but if it, whoever cracks this is going to unlock a crap ton of value. It's going to be huge. That's insane. I mean, yeah, I just think about, I think my last, the last time I was like thinking about the uh, total global real estate, you know, market, mm -hmm. it was like 217 trillion. It's now like, I think 248 or 260 trillion. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. I'm like, how on earth, you know? But it's true. It's, it's a really, it's a big one to crack. And I'm glad that you guys are at least thinking about it. Maybe we'll uh, we follow are. up after this podcast and talk a little bit about that. Um, but sure. in the meantime, and, and there is, tell you, uh, I also, I also want to tell you about this, some of the credit line stuff. And I want to tell you about how we are thinking about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. If we can go there. Absolutely. I was just going to ask you about like in the world of DeFi, what you guys are like really mm -hmm. kind of bringing to the market and working on in terms of credit and structured trades and what that really means to mm -hmm. somebody who's like structured. What is that structured? Like it has a dollar sure. amount. What does that mean? So yeah. Talk yeah to me like a I, think, uh, I love this. Yeah, you got it. So the, the big thing that uh, we've been kind of working on is uh, creating a model where you can lend money without collateral. 
that's very, very new in crypto. Um, largely because everything is usually anonymous. Now we're not. Uh, our borrowers are uh, are doxed. People know who they are, um, so that people also know who will be going after in case they default. Um, but right now, all the loans are fixed term. There's not a there's not a crypto credit card per se. Right. You know, great that you have the folks that you know crypto.com will have you with. You know, you can you can use your crypto credit card and have it take out your Bitcoin. But at the end of the day, you're 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 converting that Bitcoin to dollars at the time of payment. Right. Yep. Um, the thing that's going to be really exciting, I think the big opportunity is when you can really do lines of credit. Now, what is a line of credit? Uh, it's basically instead of a uh, lump sum of cash you get in the box, you have to give the box back full plus interest at the end of the term, 30 days. You actually uh, have a spigot. You as a borrower get access to a fire hose that you can turn on and off. And when you uh, use the water, that is to say the capital from this line of credit, uh, that water rate goes on your utility bill. At the end of the month, you pay for the water you used plus a premium for the access to the utility. W moving from you know, boxes of cash to um, a spigot that is available to a borrower is a huge, huge, huge change. It allows the price of that, uh, that capital to be uh, dynamically adjusted based on the will of the market, based on the credit model. Uh, it allows uh, loans without collateral to go uh, and, and, and be lent out for as much as 365 days. It allows people to um, not have to, to be more passive in their investing because they're just investing into a pool that allocates capital freely. Uh, it makes it so simple for borrowers to take money out because all you have to do is withdraw it, right? <laughs> right. It, um, and so at the end of the day, back to this idea of when you make things more liquid, you make them more valuable. We're making, we're making money itself more liquid. Uh, and that increases the value. It makes the capital loaned out more valuable. It makes it uh, more profitable to lenders. It makes it easier to use for borrowers. Um, and we'll be launching something uh, in November in less than uh, less than thirty days. Um, oh my gosh. That will be the world first, um, you know, line of credit in crypto. Um, pretty exciting stuff, I think. And you know, we expect that you know, ultimately, unsecured lending is an eleven trillion dollar market, but much of it is not in this structured. Uh, structured 30 day, 90 day term, much of it is a line of credit. And so we're already, we're already chipping away $600 million worth anyway uh, at uh, credit uh, on chain. But now we're really going after the juicy, like we're going after the, the prime meat on the bones of this thing. And I think it's really going to, you know, it's really going to make this platform explode. That is really, really exciting. That is so cool. Um, can you tell me, I mean, also talk to me like on five about puts and calls, how these structures. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. First of all, yeah, explain and, puts and calls a little yeah, bit sure. and how really we haven't mm -hmm. had a lot of opportunities to even use puts and calls on too many different platforms in, in DeFi and in crypto just yet, but this is coming up and I'm excited. So take it away. Sure, sure. So uh, I'm going to show my ignorance here. Uh, we are, I would say we're the experts at puts and calls and other structured financial products. Uh, but I am personally uh, a really big fan of a, of a, a sort of friended partner to our protocol, Ribbon. Now, Ribbon Finance is, um, you know, really trying to bring some of these really sophisticated TradFi products to the crypto market. Um, and that might be covered puts on Ethereum or covered calls on USDC. Um, and to try to explain uh, a little bit of what um, my understanding of this stuff is, is, uh, you know, when you're, when you're training a put or a call, you're actually um, basically paying for the privilege or um, right to purchase an asset later on um, or to sell an asset later on. Uh, it is basically, you know, playing with options. These are these are a little bit more sophisticated um, of a product. Basically, that, crypto you know, options ultimately. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. These are these are ever more sophisticated derivatives. So yeah. we're playing with derivatives. We're playing with options. We're playing with certain kind of options. We're playing with a structured bet that the company that's offering this bet to you is both managing from the perspective of making the bet, but also covering the bet and insurance so you never get burned too hard. And you can, you can take advantage of all that with a few clicks. You don't have to put in the order, the put, cover it, um, you know, to, to move your money around and, 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 um, and um, sort of recollateralize your, your um, call or have to actually um, fold your interest back in. It's all managed for you. And, oh my gosh. you know, I'm super impressed. I'm actually using these things myself. You're seeing returns as high as 50% plus on Ethereum or on wow. USDC. Um, and, you know, reasonably 
use a reasonably high risk adjusted return, you know, really, really cool. So I'm very bullish on these guys. I think what Ribbon is doing is very robust. And this um, is Ribbon, R-I-B-B-O-N, Ribbon. right? Yeah, exactly. Ribbon Finance. Yep. Got smart it. guys. Yeah, very smart guys. So when I, you mentioned that you guys are making, or that you have made all of these different tokens that are, that are tied to various different uh, traditional fiat or government issues mm -hmm. currencies. And I've just wondered if someone couldn't potentially take their Forex trading knowledge and find themselves onto the right platform to be able to do some Forex trading using crypto rather than fiat. Is that possible? Is that something that's done? Do you enable that? Mm -hmm. Is it common? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a really exciting opportunity. Um, the thing that we were going to definitely need to do is to probably bridge these currencies to uh, lower gas fee platforms so that you don't find uh, yourself, again, eating up your profits with your gas fees. Yeah. Um, but again, we have five different uh, fiat-backed stable coins, um, one backed by the British pound, the Australian dollar, the Hong Kong dollar, the Canadian dollar, and then the US dollar. Um, you know, there's not just, there's a lot of really cool opportunities for what you can do with these assets, not just Forex. Uh, you know, trading between assets so that you can get exposure from currency to another and take advantage of the of the uh, change relative to the other. But also you can allow greater accessibility. You know, we have a lot of users in Great Britain. We have a lot of users in Australia, Hong Kong. They don't want to be trading in dollars as their back back end currency. They want to be trading in Hong Kong dollars and British pounds. They don't want to expose themselves to Forex risk on top of crypto risk. Right. So, you know, in, in principle, you're also increasing accessibility. You're making, you know, you're increasing financial opportunity in that regard. Uh, but perhaps uh, one of my favorites, one of the most interesting things I think you could do is you can create the stablest possible coin. Um, and if you go back to the era of sort of Facebook Libra, now called DM, I would question as to whether that's going to happen at all. One of the great theses was that they were going to create an asset backed by a blend of different fiat currencies. Right. Well, we did that. We did that early on. Uh, we call it TFX, true FX, basically. Uh, and it's a stable coin backed 20, by, by all five of our stable coins. It, is, it, it maintains um, a dollar value of, I think, somewhere between one to 1.26. Uh, I forget the number exactly, but it, it retains its value very well. Um, and it's the first ever that I know of stable coin basket. Right, backed by not crypto, but by fiat, and backed by five different fiat currencies. Yeah. Um, we haven't found, uh, you know, a ton of like really use cases on it yet, but we created something as a proof of concept that exists today, and and you know can now trade freely. Um, the that token also allows you to do one other interesting thing is by holding that token, you can come in with dollars, come out in Canadian dollars, right there. So the coin itself is a forex exchange. Like right. blended into the dollar. So that is fantastic. Um, pretty cool. Oh my God. Anything else that uh, I forgot to ask you that like we need to make sure people know is coming on the pike? November is going to be a big month. I mean, especially in this yeah, bull market, really which I imagine and is then, last uh, Hopefully, December, January, we, we can announce something else that we can kind of jammy on. The What's big that? thing uh, for TrueFi and for any other big financial product that people are working on is that you don't really want to be the just a marketplace for one thing, say structured financial products or for yeah. just crypto backed loans. You yeah. want to be the market for as many things as possible, and you want the infrastructure to shine versus just the assets you're sending out. Right. So uh, the thing that we hope to announce probably January or December, uh, depending on what partners we can find, is at the end of the day, like TrueFi is going to be an infrastructure play. It's going to be the place where money goes to find yield, right, at the end of the day. And right now, there are only any crypto companies. The thing that we see in the future is us looking a lot more like... Uh, the, um, shall we say, the financial products department of a major bank, right? We're not going to be a bank. We're not going to do financial, you know, products necessarily ourselves. But let's let's take an analogy. The way that uh, we kind of spoke about earlier, if you're a JP Morgan and you're going to buy an index fund, JP Morgan will sell you their proprietary index fund alongside the Vanguard index fund, the yeah. S&P 500, and whatever else you might be able to find in the market. Right now, JP Morgan is playing two roles there. They sell a product and they sell the service of helping you find the product. And TrueFi wants to be the latter. We don't want to just sell you a single product. Hey, lend crypto to crypto companies. We well, want to be the place where you go and say, hey, I want to get really good risk adjusted yield. I want to do this across, let's say, real estate, but also maybe some crypto companies. And maybe let's try this whole debt financing thing too. Okay. You, you mix and match your portfolio. Maybe you allocate, say, 100 grand and you want to do 30 grand in each and 10 to, to put in the most speculative asset type. And each of those um, arenas, let's say debt financing versus entertainment financing, is going to be managed by a major partner. 
a, a true investment manager type, like a, um, a broker or a, um, you know, a venture fund or some sort of other sort of financial entity. Uh, and infrastructure, and, and TrueFi will just be serving as the infrastructure, will be delivering access to these different financial products in yeah. very different categories. Um, maybe some of them will be those REITs like we talked about. Maybe some of those will be debt financing for startup companies. Uh, and, and of course, some of our bread and butter will remain lending out to crypto companies, giving people the greatest possible breadth of investments um, just in a single place um, and, and doing it all in a few clicks without making you go through a bank that eats up all your profits and protecting you against loss uh, with layers of protection. That's the dream. That's the dream to help money move most quickly to wherever it can find the best possible yield. And that's what's coming very, very soon uh, in early 2022 to TrueFi. There is also something else coming in early 2022, which True. is basically you guys are going to be becoming a complete and total DAO, right? Mm, You're moving from a centralized yes, exactly. model to a decentralized model. So first exactly. of all, can you, can you explain what a DAO is for anybody who doesn't know sure. and like talk to me like I'm five? And then we'll go into how you, you guys are adopting that model and how that, that movement is going to go. For sure. Let's jam. So uh, right now, think of the DAO as a, as a, shall we say, companion and competitor to the traditional corporate model. Traditional corporate model, very hierarchical, very hierarchical very centralized. And uh, typically, there's a very clear in-group, out-group. What is a DAO? A DAO is the opposite in many ways. A DAO is much more flat or organization. Uh, a DAO is very, very meritocratic. People who lead are the ones that are contributing the most, not the ones who've been there longest, who've been promoted by a particular entity. Um, a DAO also uh, has a very uh, flowing range of participants. Some people who are there spending 95 plus on the project and some that come in to do a single project on a one-off basis. And finally, a DAO is, is ideally moving towards the, the sort of ideal of decentralization. It may, may not start fully decentralized, but a DAO is always moving in the direction of decentralizing, meaning putting the power in the hands of those that contribute and use the product versus in the hands of those who work there nine to five and get a salary, but may never touch the product in the end. Why this is so important is because ultimately, uh, TrueFi is not a product per se, but it's a protocol. It's a little bit like a coding language, right? When you might, you know, try to pick up coding, you might play with Python, you might play with JavaScript. Um, there's no per se Python company or JavaScript company, right? right. It's open source. Uh, there's no, there. Exactly, exactly. It's an open source model. And at the end of the day, we want to make sure that if it's an open source model, that the, that the ownership, that the incentives, that the, that the value alignment goes to the hands of the people who are actually using that coding language, using the open source software, using this protocol. Um, and it's ultimately gonna be over time, ever more up to them about what they want built, how they're gonna build it, how they're gonna explain it to the world as, as from a marketing perspective, what they might do to audit it uh, and so on. And uh, this is a model of progressive decentralization popularized by, you know, I think uh, Compound and MakerDAO um, written up extensively by Andreessen Horowitz, uh, a really incredible investment company, also one of our investors. And um, one, uh, it's a path that we've been following. Uh, we have an amazing legal team. We have an amazing uh, compliance team. Uh, they're making sure that you know, we uh, follow every possible you know, guidance from the legal entities in the US, check every possible box uh, with the grand culminating um, moment that soon, not yet, but soon, uh, we're going to announce a, um, a formal DAO entity, a foundation, a nonprofit foundation acting in the best interest of TRU holders and the protocol. The foundation is going to have a few responsibilities, namely managing the treasury, uh, helping governance, um, you know, maybe going after uh, defaulted uh, debtors, so people who actually default on loans, uh, amongst a few other things. Um, it's going to be located in a, in a jurisdiction very, very friendly and mature in terms of their DAO legislation. Um, and it'll also be the beholder of um, a lot of the TrueFi IP. It's going to become the steward of this, of this, uh, of this project. Um, and that'll also mean that, you know, hey, maybe my employment changes. Uh, maybe some of our team moves to becoming, you know, contractors to the DAO. It's an interesting thing because I can't tell you all yet of what's going to happen because we're so early into this into this ecosystem shift of yeah. companies going from these centralized you know glass buildings in New Yorks and San Francisco's to a bunch of nomads around the world working off laptops like us you know when not doing podcasts uh, you know helping build the sort of financial future and getting tokens as compensation uh, versus a salary and health benefits. Um, I can't tell you what it'll look like yet, 
but I can tell you it's exciting. And I think in many ways for some companies, it will be the future. I love that summary. I know it was long, but it was in depth and it was fantastic. I feel like I want to like write that down and be like, okay, here, you guys, look, this is the future. Here we go. I'm like, why do we even have nations? Thankfully, it's point? recorded. Yes, it's very important. It's very important. And it's just so exciting. I mean, as you're like, well, we're not doing podcasts. We're actually just changing the way we govern ourselves as human beings. No big deal. Just kind Indeed. of what you do as you do during the day, you know, nine exactly. to five. But there's also a five to nine after it? that, you know. It's like, exactly. Exactly. My Lord. But you guys are doing some really amazing things at uh, at Trust Token and, so. and at TruFi, and I'm just I I'm it. totally thrilled to hear about it and to know what's coming down the pike. If people wanted to get involved, like what was be the what would be the first baby step a user would take mm -hmm. to get involved um, in what TruFi is doing? Is it is it like, hey, I learned about this cool platform. They have a utility token, and I buy that, and it just kind of like I get to sit in the background and kind of see what happens, and that gives me some. Mm -hmm. I mean, I look at it like if I make an investment, even like a hundred dollar investment in something, right. it's like I paid a hundred dollars for a class that I might not end up having to pay for because I keep it <laughs> and I didn't have to pay for it. Right. It but I got, it gives me skin in the game and it makes me think, oh, now I really want to, I, I need to know about this. And it gets me invested enough of myself to, to like learn more. Right. So that becomes my, yeah, sure. I paid a hundred dollars in an investment, but it's really an investment in this education that if I lose it all, I still learned a bunch. So it's the same as a class. That's true. It's going to come out better than a class anyway. The so classic saying, how, you throw your hat over the fence, then you have to climb the dang fence. Yeah. Yeah. So if of all the classes, of all the things people could do, what would be like the first baby step a person could do? They go to truefight.io and do mm -hmm. what? For sure. I would say uh, getting involved in any of these projects is basically first you learn, then you then you uh, join the community, then you uh, get put skin in the game, and then you actually participate and, and offer value. So as a first possible step, uh, I would definitely recommend folks go to truefi.io and leave, just skim the light paper, maybe watch a YouTube video. If they like what they see, I would join our Discord and follow our Twitter. If they like what they hear there, then I recommend you know uh, making a, a smart financial investment of their own in the token if they see it fit um, and do their own research and you know don't take my financial advice. Of course, of course. Um, and and uh, you know use that as an opportunity to learn. And if that all feels great to them and if they want to keep going, then we're always looking for folks to help us to actually, you know, from the bottom up, tell the world, create better content, um, you know, bring new borrowers to the platform and help us also become a partner or even a borrower so that we can launch new financial products on TruFi. So maybe they want to lead a REIT oriented um, uh, investment vehicle. Um, that, that's that's going to be one of the most exciting things that we that would want to really see cool. from folks. I mean, the more and more people that yeah. can find their way to actually, you know, almost, in a way, almost employ themselves by doing something and yes. bringing a project to the platform is fantastic. You know, when you say from the bottom up, get the word out, I do wanna, um, this is in very early stages, but I've been approached by a company or still working on the details, so I won't say, but uh, to start a women's, uh, and, and so, like an ambassador program, really to strategically try to reach out to getting more women involved in crypto. Mm -hmm. We're involving, we're, we're mm -hmm. seeing just the biggest transfer of wealth of modern history and hi the history of human beings. and you know, it is still totally male dominated and we need mm -hmm. to see gender balance getting into that soon because that's part of how this world's going to change. And so really mm -hmm. trying to do that and have like aggressive outreach programs is something that I've been kind of tapping the shoulder to architect. And if you guys are mm -hmm. interested at all, if that's something that you guys are doing, I'd love to hear how you're doing it. And if you are interested mm -hmm. in pursuing that, I would love to, you know, um, share with you whatever it is that I end up architecting that hopefully is, is quite effective to just be, get the word out to as many diverse users as possible, not just women, but like people put all marginalized communities. We need to just get more diversity in mm -hmm. crypto. That's my soapbox. Where is it? It's right under me. I'm standing on it. That's where I went. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. I think uh, we're really proud of the uh, work we're doing there in hiring. We have a really nice ratio there, uh, but that ratio and the community makeup both need to improve. Um, yeah. And so I'd be very keen to see how we can collaborate. Uh, we're definitely Absolutely. interested in, uh, at the very least, putting some grants out for, uh, you know, community participants, um, especially ones that can add, you know, a unique voice. Absolutely. Well, that's great. Um, we should definitely follow up on that and talk about it. And hopefully mm -hmm. our next part two conversation will be about mm -hmm. Truth Cartel, <laughs> marketing, getting the word out and how to bring more diversity mm -hmm. to this space because Lord knows we need it. And uh, people all remember me. Why? Because I'm like one of about three women in blockchain. <laughs> and then I'm like, hi, another guy. Nice to meet you. I know we met. You I just <laughs> blend right in with so many of them though. So uh, it's all, I don't mean to be rude, but you know, often it's like, yeah, face, totally remember it. Hmm. Nice so to nice meet to you see again. You. Yeah. yeah. So good what to was see your last you. name? <laughs> There's so many tricks. <laughs> There's so many tricks. What was your last name again? Ah, I'll be calling oh, you my Oh, be, be my friend. You know, that's another <laughs> classic. 
Oh yeah, that's the other one. We gotta meet. Just you guys have to meet. I walk away to the bar and come back and ask your name later for my friend. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's you know all of those tricks are employed. If you come down to Puerto Rico, you gotta look me up. This will be fantastic. And I think um, we'll love we to. end up we we got a, a really fun kind of a winter season of like regular parties at wonderful houses, and so mm-hmm. it's really hard to end up not I'm in speaking the my language. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the Mexico City Puerto Rico route is also a popular one, so that's you know, a beautiful invitation. I more and more direct flights are opening up to Puerto Rico. We just got Austin to Puerto Rico, like on American Airlines. Oh, Mazel Tov. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, huge. that is huge. So anyway, well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much, Michael. Pleasure I have it written down here. That's how I remember your name now. See, it's like, if, as long as Nailed I have it written it. down, I'll be fine. Nailed it. But uh, yes. Is there anything else you want to leave uh, people with um, as you as you depart? Do you have any last tweetable words of wisdom or is that just putting you on the spot? I think you covered pretty much everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. Uh, you know, for a lot of these like these like DeFi hot takes, you know, speculative bets, uh, NFT mints and stuff like that. You can, uh, you know, I, I don't think TrueFi is going to be sharing a lot of that, but you can definitely uh, follow me on Twitter at Gasyorek M, uh, and that's where I, I put a little bit more of this degenerate stuff in there. All right. Uh, you know, really fun parties in New York, uh, having to do with crypto, cool routings to to visit, you know, Mexico City or. Um, or, uh, you know, Tulum or what have you for crypto shenanigans or, you know, cool stuff happening in NFT world. That's yeah. where that stuff goes, yeah. distinct from all the true five DeFi stuff. Oh, I love it. Absolutely. Okay, so now you can get in the know. We'll have to make sure that the uh, link to your Twitter <laughs> handle is made available. Watch your Twitter. Your I appreciate it so Twitter. much. Okay. okay. Thank you so much for all your time. Really appreciate you diving in with me, all the fun routes we took in this conversation and can't wait to do it again soon. Yeah, me too. Well, thank you so much. I'm here with, again, Michael Gassiorek from... Trust Token and TrueFi, Head of Marketing and uh, Chatty Dude, I got to say, this has been such an easy conversation. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And uh, yes, so this is New Trust Economy and I'm Monica Profit and I will catch you on the next episode. Thanks so much for listening. You've been listening to the New Trust Economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at newtrusteconomy. Thanks for exploring the new trust economy with us.